Okay, I'm Stefan Küsel, and uh, yeah, today I'd like to talk about world building, world partition, especially about data layers. Um, first of all, just a few words. Uh, I don't want to talk one hour about me, but uh, just so uh, that you know who I am. Um, I'm working since 2000. Uh, I started working in the 90s as an audio engineer, and then I went over to um, technical planning, technical direction, head of production stuff in uh, basically everything which is event technology related. I started with audio, then went over to lightning and uh, video projection. And in the end, I did lots of video plannings, um, large scale events, uh, lots of LED screen projection mapping and uh, yeah, everything related to that stuff, um, which led at some point led me to yeah, program uh, and operate uh, media control systems, show control systems, um, where I started, uh, yeah, programming and started programming in C-sharp as well. And uh, then I went over and did lots of interactive programmings for touch screens and uh, whatever applications for exhibitions and stuff like that. And suddenly, I arrived at Unity at some point, and uh, then, uh, yeah, due to more and more were virtual production based uh, uh, Unreal Engine stuff in the world going on, um, I was uh, pushed in the direction of Unreal Engine. A good friend of mine, uh, or many friends of mine, uh, told me, yeah, that it would be better to go the way with Unreal. And uh, then uh, since uh, 2019, I started with Unreal. And uh, yeah, since that time, I'm basically focusing on virtual production and just doing a little event stuff. Uh, and yeah, the main focus is virtual production and Unreal. So I think um, that's enough uh, for talking about me. Let's have a look what we want to talk about today. Uh, world partition. Um, world building, world partition, what does that mean? Um, the main thing is, or I have got some questions which I think are really, really um, worth thinking about. Uh, the first thing is, why do we need open worlds? Um, uh, the second thing is, uh, whom is it interesting for? And uh, why do we need a structure or a concept um, to handle yeah, stuff in open worlds? Um, I think um, the first things um, are pretty obvious. Um, open worlds are, or if you have a, a game, which is really like all like the demo or whatever, where you have really a big world um, and you want to go from A to B, um, uh, you need some kind of um, a level streaming system or whatever system to make it possible to load that part of the world which is actually be seen or rendered and to unload or hide all the stuff which is not seen. That was in the last years uh, was uh, made um, with a classical level structure. I will talk about that in a while, but um, uh, now we have the ability to have one level and all the streaming of uh, whatever sub level or actors is just handled um, from the engine. And so you don't need to load in levels or unload levels or sub levels. Um, this is done in a different way now. So basically, um, just just two words to to my or, or in every project I did until I think uh, a few months ago, I always used to work with a classic level structure, and I told all my clients to to stick to the classic level structure because it's easier if you start with Unreal to really. Um, yeah, to really have things loaded which sit in a level and to unload them if you unload that level. That is a pretty obvious and clear. Um, in open worlds or world partition worlds, um, this, these things can get a little bit more complex. 
But uh, as always, or as usual in Unreal, it is the more complex things are, the more flexible you are, and um, uh, the, the, the more um, yeah, ways or directions you can go for solving different problems or different needs. Therefore, from my point of view, uh, it is really, really interesting for everybody who's working with Unreal to work with open world levels, because um, especially, and that was, is what we are talking about today, um, especially if you, if you work with data layers, you have got the ability to work somehow like in a classic level structure, but you have additional uh, bonuses and, and, and additional possibilities to really handle stuff flexible, to, to really show actors, to, to have some kind of actor sets in, in, in different worlds, um, which you can reuse. Um, and there are lots of um, uh, possibilities uh, yeah, in, in world partition levels. Um, as I already said, uh, why do we need a structure? Yeah, we need a structure because it's not possible to, to basically stream in everything, especially if you have a look or uh, the ones of you who already had a look at the city sample or the Valley of Ancient. Um, these are really uh, good examples of why it's necessary in a game uh, surrounding um, to have uh, some kind of the abilities of uh, streaming in stuff, streaming out stuff, because especially in the city sample, you have uh, lots of uh, buildings and lots of hierarchical lots and stuff like that, which uh, at some point um, need to be handled and need to be streamed in and out. And uh, uh, Unreal is, since uh, version five, is uh, really, really, um, yeah, helping you with this stuff. And if you really get a good uh, understanding of the basics, uh, you're really able to dig into that deeper. Um, yeah, as I already said, uh, why do we need a structure? Um, yeah, we want to have control over the actors which are streamed in or streamed out. Um, we want to uh, have, maybe we want to have different variants of a level. For example, the Valley of Ancient um, has a night atmosphere or scene and a day scene and when they change in between or when you can change in between these scenes it's just like the other scene is loaded and uh, the the current scene is unloaded and that is done via data layers um yeah you can manually preload uh, dedicated actors you want to to um, you can manually unload manually load whatever um you ne your needs are especially in virtual production, it is really handy to have kinds, especially if you have, or, or I did lots of live um, uh, uh, productions like a green screen or um, uh, LED screen, multi-camera setups. And there you always have to think about that you are live the whole time. And so you need to build up your level or your scene in a way that you are or have always have some kind of a fallback uh, ability to to blend over a logo or to to go to blend in things to and and to play live movies or to have like inserts or or just like subtitles or or whatever and all these things if you load them all at once and have them in memory just to wait till they are fired um uh, th that is too much so basically you are able to split that stuff up and then uh, handle these things one by after the other. Um, uh, yeah, and as I said, overlays and transitions for hiding the scene in the Valley of Ancient, for example, they just blend over a white screen and then they load everything and then they blend away the white screen. And so everything is loaded and is displayed at once and is not popping up like uh, one after the other. Um, <clears throat> So let's just quickly have a little look at the uh, classic UE level structure. Um, I think all of you or uh, who has worked with the classic level structure in the last years or in the last month um, should have known that in general, it is just like, um, as you see on the right side, um, you have one main level, which is called the persistent level, and that is holding the sub levels. And these sub levels can be streamed in um, via blueprint logic manually, or they will always be streamed in. And so if you want to see actors sitting in that level, you will just load them uh, via blueprint when you need it. 
Um, what I always do is, especially if you, if you have bigger virtual production setups um, where you have kind of an LED volume, which is uh, played back with like uh, 20 computers or 10 computers, um, and then you have some kind of a compositing computer which is doing a set extension or which is just doing some overlay stuff, um, then you have the problem that you have different scenarios going on, but you want to have the same show on all this on all uh, on all your clients on all your PCs because otherwise it, it gets really really annoying if you if you have to try to keep several different projects uh, or several different levels um, uh, up to date um, this is really really annoying and therefore it is really some kind of a, a, an idea or best practice to have different levels for different configurations. And so if you, for example, imagine you have a compositing, like you have somehow an external video feed coming in, and then you have the digital scene, um, then you only need that external video feed on your compositing machine. And so if you just load that sub-level on that machine, then um, this really helps you to keep everything clean because you, you are not messing up the show for the LED screen. Um, PCs with uh, SDI inputs or whatever stuff you don't have on these machines. <clears throat> so this is classic level structure. And uh, why should we move to a world partition setup? Um, basically, the, the main difference is that we don't have a level structure. We only have one level. Um, and therefore, if you just have one level, um, you need to have other abilities to work or to, to just group actors and to stream in actors at once, depending on your needs. Um, this is just an overview with some um, yeah, words, um, which, which really, or expressions, which, which really, uh, you, you really, run around or, or you, you come up to when you work with the world partition levels. Um, there are different um, things which um, are really, really, uh, or if, if I want to talk about everything today, um, we would be sitting here for five, six hours. So um, I, nevertheless, I want to give you an overview of uh, what uh, themes and what uh, things are important as well. Um, we will be talking about data layers, especially um, later, and I will show you how to set up data layers and uh, how uh, to deal with data layers and how to separate your world in uh, different parts and uh, like you would do with a classic level structure. Um, and uh, that is what I want to focus on today. Um, other things that are really, really big advantages um, are the other stuff, what I what you see here is it's a first of all one file per actor. Um, in the last years, it was like in every level or, or every actor and every properties of an actor uh, were stored in the level. So um, when you wanted to work on a level in a big team and you work with source control, you check out that level. Uh, and uh, then you can change the level and uh, add actors and delete actors and whatever. If you then wanted to work with two or three or four people on that level, you have to decide who is able to work on that level, but it wasn't possible to work to check out that level with more than one people um, from source control. So now it is possible because you only have one level and it would only be possible that one guy is working on that level. Um, uh, due to that, every properties and every um, values of, of properties and, and things um, like a transform, for example, you have a, you have a cube sitting at position X, Y, Z, um, and this position X, Y, Z was stored in the level. Um, now, this transform is stored with one file per actor, and so um, every actor gets one file, and in this file, um, the, the, for example, the transform is stored. So therefore, only the actors are checked out if you work with source control. You only block or lock 
uh, the actors you are currently working on, even if you work in the same level with 100 different people. And so um, this is really a big advantage. Um, the other thing is the runtime grid. Um, that uh, just a few words about that. It's just like the world is divided in um, uh, in uh, boxes, and uh, so uh, Unreal is handling the streaming in and streaming out of actors, um, depending on your uh, on on uh, how far away they are and if they sit in a grid. Uh, cell you are currently in or which is next to you and uh, uh, I will talk about that uh, a little bit later um, the one thing I want to mention is uh, the streaming in and out stuff uh, can be handled with streaming sources so what I said uh, you have the grid structure and then you have like um, you can uh, mainly in games uh, the, if you have a first person character or third person character this character is acting as a streaming source. So everywhere this actor is running around, stuff is streamed in. But you can manually attach streaming sources to other actors. Imagine you have like um, uh, some kind of a big skyscraper building or whatever, and, 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 and there is a fire going on, or, 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 and you want this to be loaded from the beginning, even if it's 1,000 kilometers away, then you could attach a streaming source to that uh, Thing, and then that will always be loaded in with all the th things um, uh, surrounding it. Um, other things is uh, it is possible to group actors in level instances and pack level blueprints. I will not talk about that today, but um, yeah, we can talk about that uh, in uh, the next sessions. Um, and uh, uh, especially what is really about worth mentioning it is uh, the H lot uh, system which is really, really great. And which is really, uh, if, especially if you if you work with large levels and if you, uh, big cities or landscapes and stuff like that, it is really, really worth uh, digging into that a little bit more. But uh, let's talk about data layers. And uh, just uh, I just want to mention some, some settings which are really, really important. Um, maybe all of you know that or whatever, but uh, if you want to work with world partition levels, you need to enable streaming in the uh, world settings. This is enabled by default in many levels, but if, if you, uh, there are some templates where it is not, and so it's worth just having a look that that is enabled. Uh, here you can also set uh, cell sizes and stuff like that. I will not talk about that today, um, but uh, just, uh, yeah, just have a look at it. Um, general, yeah, as I already said, um, streaming in and out actors are grid cell based. Uh, uh, so uh, wherever you walk around, um, uh, the cells next to you will be streamed in and will be loaded and the cells far away from you will be unloaded and uh, streamed away. As I already said, um, player controller uh, is a streaming source, or you could just attach a streaming source to every other uh, actor and uh, then everything surrounding that actor will be loaded um, all the time when that actor is moving or whatever. You don't need to track that, uh, it's automatically done. Um, there is some settings, um, I don't wanna go into depth about that, um, about um, how an actor is handled or how the actor is uh, loading is handled. Um, I just want to mention that uh, you have in every actor, you have um, uh, this uh, world partition settings. Um, and uh, this is um, basically telling the actor how he is, how his streaming is handled when you are working with uh, data layers. And so if you activate is spatially loaded, then this actor is loaded when a range of any streaming source when, when not assigned to a disabled light uh, data layer. This actor is loaded when in a range of any streaming source. I think it should be. Um, so what does that mean? That means um, this actor is always loaded um, when he is in the close to a streaming source or not assigned to a disabled data layer. Uh, if you disable, oops, if you disable spatially loaded, then the actor is loaded when not assigned to a disabled data layer. 
I think I have, I think there is something wrong in, in my writing here um, because it should be uh, that the, the actor is loaded when in a range of a streaming source and when not assigned to, let, let's, uh, let's uh, have a look at that later um, because it, it really gets clear if, if you uh, deal with it. I think I have I, I think I have a copy paste uh, uh, um, mistake here. Classic one doesn't matter. <laughs> Go on. So um, the just one thing um, about data layers. Data layers. Um, uh, we have a data layer asset, a data layer instance. So let's have a look how that looks um, in the in the context of uh, of Unreal. And so basically, um, or I think, let's first have a look, why is that interesting for us? And uh, um, I'll quickly want to show you a nice little demo scene. Um, here we have our third person world, uh, which is populated um, with the with some nice uh, static meshes. And uh, in this case, I set up a little scene to show you um, if we have like two situations, like if you want to have two different variants or if you want to move from one world to the, to the other. Uh, in this case, I have some kind of a nice bluish uh, spheric world and we have another world which is nice red and cubic. And uh, I simply made two buttons um, to switch between these. Um, but what you can see is that what, as soon as you switch, he is unloading the not needed actors and is loading the new actors. But this is not happening at once. So, um, because uh, it takes time, this is just a demo. So I have uh, thousands of instantiated meshes meshes um, to just have a little bit of load in that scene. Um, if you have a scene like the Matrix City or the Valley of Ancient or whatever, then this loading takes like one minute or something like that, depending on your computer. And so therefore, um, it could be useful to hide the transition to not have this popping effect. And therefore, I did um, uh, just like a simple um, post-process um, uh, transition level, which is basically just like loading uh, a post-process volume, which is then covering everything, and then um, is, uh, yeah, just uh, giving you the ability to see everything when everything is loaded. In this case, I needed to put in some delays because um, uh, the loading is quicker than, than uh, the transition would be. Uh, so I just waited, um, but uh, if you have big levels, then it's really, really good to have the ability to transition between things, um, just to, to yeah, just to be able to change the look of your scene without things popping in and and stuff like that. Um, just, just, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, and then I'm, yeah, it's just that uh, you have that in that project as well. Uh, this is just like a little bonus. Um, you have got thumbnail buttons here. And if you press shift, uh, you can update the thumbnail of the button. Um, this is not fully implemented. Uh, this is just like um, handled in that project. Uh, if you want to implement that in your project or whatever, you have to save uh, these uh, button textures uh, to static textures uh, in uh, as assets, but um, this is just like uh, a little bit for you playing around with. So um, talking about data layers, it is like, as I said, uh, it somehow we have all the actors sitting in the blue world, and uh, then we have all the actors sitting in the red world, which you can see here, they are grayed out, and it is written unloaded. This is because they are currently unloaded. And, uh, and this is how we, and here we have the transition level. So uh, in this case, I did one folder for every level. Scene one is the blue scene, scene red is the uh, scene two, and then we have the transition. 
um, to separate all the actors into two groups, so-called, or uh, into different, um, yeah, into different, when, when we were working with the classic level structure, uh, then you would say into different sub-levels. Um, this is handled with data layers, and therefore we have a data layer browser. Um, and in this data layer browser, we have data layer instances. So I have a data layer instance for scene one, which is the blue scene, which is currently visible and loaded. Uh, I have one for scene two, and I have a data layer for the transition level. So as soon as I enable scene two and make it visible, we see all the actors in scene two and scene one uh, in the level. So this is a good ability to, to really, if you're working in the editor, you can really, really um, um, change uh, the visibility and stuff like that, somehow similar to um, a classic loaded sublevels. And uh, so if I want to only see the red uh, level stuff, uh, then you can do like that. Um, the other thing is all these data layers are just instances sitting in this browser. So if you want to create a data layer instance, you have to create an asset in the content browser, which is called a data layer. And uh, that, is, uh, that is what I uh, really, really, um, uh, or, or therefore we always have, we have the three data layers sitting in the browser. And this is uh, somehow a data layer asset. So we need one data layer asset to have a data layer instance in our level. And that currently is sitting in the level and holding a reference to the actors which live in that so-called layer. And that's how it is possible to, to yeah, change stuff. And uh, especially if you do it in runtime, you can see uh, in the right uh, uh, here, you can see in the, in the browser what, what is happening. And so if I switch to the red world, you see that uh, the red world is activated and uh, loaded. And if we would do a transition, then you see that the transition level is loaded, then it's overlaying everything and underneath that, um, the, the other scene is loaded and is displayed then. Okay. So any questions uh, till here? There were only one question from Volker. Uh, there is no change to the icons. That's not a question. There's no change to the what? Icons. Your icons, your eye and your... Uh... Your data layer is gonna uh, get green. That's that's in runtime. That's that's the runtime. If you are not in runtime, um, you have you have this behavior. Yeah. And then um, you see toggle loaded in editor flag, or toggle. Okay, he's not saying it, but um, the eye is toggling the visibility. So um, basically, if you toggle, uh, if you try to toggle the visibility then uh, it's it's not possible if it's not uh, loaded. But if it's loaded, you can just hide it. And this is for the in-editor mode. And the current level, which you are currently, or the current data layer, which you are working in, um, uh, is, is uh, highlighted in green. OK, thank you. So, so that is somehow similar to the classic level um, if you had sub levels, uh, you you uh, and you made a level active, uh, then uh, then you were able to to see the active level down here as well. If you want to place new actors or whatever, so if you now place new actors, they will be placed in the current um, data layer. If you press play, then uh, you have the you have the green or or the activated scenes in light green and everything which is unloaded is in gray. And so as soon as I switch over to scene two, it is green. Or if we have a transition, then the both will be activated. And uh, yeah, 
and then they will be unloaded again when it's done. Okay. Okay. So what we, um, yeah, what we talked about is the data layer asset, the data layer instance, the browser. Um, we need to create different data layers. Then we need to assign data layers. Then we can assign actors to data layers. And then we can enable disable data layers at runtime. Okay, how does that look like? Um, we, will, we will now, or I would like to set that up um, with you. Um, I think the, the best way is um, to really, uh, uh, if you would like, you can follow along. Um, it is not that complex. Uh, and so, yeah, I can encourage everybody just to, to go on. You can find the final level in the demo project um, under maps, open world final. This is that level, which I was showing you here currently. Um, we will start off in the open world training level. This open world training level is somehow uh, yeah, the same like uh, the open world final. I left away the transition level. So um, uh, what we will be doing now is we'll focus on um, setting up that system for two scenes. Um, and uh, uh, therefore we have scene one, which is the bluish content and scene two, which is the reddish stuff. And so, uh, so therefore let's start from scratch. What I will do is, um, first of all, I need to create a data layer. Um, therefore I would uh, say like, let's name a demo. And uh, then, uh, yeah, we, we have to somehow create a data layer. You can always, um, in the content browser, you can always start to, to uh, type. And as soon as you start to type, you get all the the uh, responding assets or, or uh, not assets um, uh, types of assets or classes. Uh, in this case, we need the data layer class, which you find under miscellaneous. So, so if you just right click and you just go to miscellaneous, then you find uh, the data layer. So, what we do is we create we take one data layer. And uh, I always tend to do a prefix of DL for data layer. Um, this is just up to you or your naming conventions of the team or whatever. Um, I'm really, since I started working with Unreal, I really find it useful to have these uh, prefixes, not especially in the content browser because you can filter for, for content here as well. But it is really, really much more handy if you work in the Windows Explorer or whatever um, because there, they are all U asset files and you can uh, separate them just by the name. Uh, and so if you work in, in, uh, with, with all the assets uh, and you want to manually copy them or whatever, handle them manually, it is really much, much more handy if you have uh, prefixes for everything you work with. Uh, Stefan, there is, there is one question in yeah. the chat, uh, which probably related to the topic for the, for the last two minutes. So, um, Powell asks, in an open world, I believe it's good to keep all the building in sight in data layers and load them in out with triggers. But is it all right to unload whole bunches of level? So like whole selections? That that just that is really really depending on um, on your needs because um, when you load in a data layer, um, everything will be loaded which is sitting in that data layer. So <clears throat> if you imagine you have the matrix city, um, and you have all the buildings in that uh, in that city sample in one data layer, then they will all be loaded. Um, that will lead to maybe a crash uh, depending on your machine, but um, uh, that is far too much for 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 Unreal to handle. Um, so, in in that case, 
it makes more sense to keep the, the streaming handling on the Unreal side. And so therefore I would at that stage just work with the grid cells and leave the streaming in and out of these buildings or streaming in of their corresponding H lots, which uh, I don't know if everybody knows what an H lot is, but um, uh, this is kind of uh, the ability to, yeah, mainly just to simplify it, uh, to, to replace static meshes with um, a plain and a, a, a simplified um, uh, texture. Um, and this can be, or, or this is not done if you if you stream in all you uh, if you stream in all the buildings which are sitting on one data layer because then they are all streamed in. And if you want um, just to be the ones next to you streamed in, then you would um, uh, have to separate them in different data layers if you want to have control uh, manually. So then you would have to set up. A streaming system like in 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 the older days when you had sub levels and then you just had like a sub level sitting uh, on the left and a sub level sitting on the right to you and uh, I don't know if you are looking to the left uh, you can stream out the sub level to the right or whatever but this is uh, this uh, uh, um, or I would suggest if you have bigger cities and and many 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 buildings um, either separate them in clusters or whatever if you want to have control. Uh, and then have a data layer for every cluster of 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 uh, buildings, or have no data layer, and then um, uh, the 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 streaming in and out of all your buildings will be handled depending on if the player is next to them or not. Does that help? Okay. Maybe. Yep. Yep. He says thanks. Okay. Um. Then. Uh, yeah. We we were just setting up the first data layer, so um, I will just call it uh, blue, or to really make it clear, scene one, blue scene one. And uh, due to that, we need another one. I would just create a, a second one uh, and uh, name that uh, data layer red and that will be scene two okay how does a data layer look like basically a data layer doesn't have much properties or much going on inside um this is mainly uh if you come from a programming perspective uh, this is mainly a class holding references to actors and these references are not exposed or to actor classes and uh, or to instances and uh, uh, due to there is only two settings you have here one is the debug color so if you are debugging things you can have different colors for different data layers so you can see what actors are sitting on what data layer and uh, basically you can set the data layer type to be only editor or to be runtime in this case we need runtime because we want to load that data layer in runtime uh, or these actors in runtime. So um, that's the setting I would uh, recommend to set up for both. And now we have our two data layers sitting in the asset or in the content browser. At this stage, they are not related to our world or to our map at all. They are just plain data layer sitting there and waiting for something to happen but um uh it's just like a, a class or a blueprint uh, to 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 keep the the wording um if you just create a blueprint in here and don't put the blueprint in the level um uh, it is just a, a class which is um uh having yeah properties and functions and stuff like that um but you need to instantiate it in the level so that you can really do stuff with it. And so therefore, how to instantiate a data level uh, in, in this scene, you simply can drag and drop it to the data layers browser. And now you see here is our level with at, at the moment one data layer. 
instance. And as you see here, you have this, this world data layers um, uh, actor, which is pretty much the handler of, of uh, the data layer browser and stuff like that. And this is all um, handled by um, uh, Unreal um, on its own. And there is no property which you can set or whatever, but you need this actor to sit in the level to handle um, this uh, data layer instancing. So now you can think of what we'll do next. Um, we'll throw in the second data layer. So now we have our two data layers in the scene. And uh, you, what you can do is, um, or what we will have to do, you can specify what, how it will be, or how its state will be initially. In our case, due to that we don't want anything to be, or, or we want to have full control over what is loaded and what is not loaded, um, we first of all could put them both to not loaded. And then you have an initial, and this is for the for the editor, which which uh, yeah, which doesn't make sense. Um, uh, let's put the initial runtime state to unloaded, um, because we want to handle the level loading in runtime. So basically, that is everything for now. And what we now have to do is we have to assign our actors to our data layers. There are several ways um, you can do that. One way is to simply just um, mark all your, just select all your actors of, in this case, scene one. And then if you do a right click, um, you are able, it's some, somehow similar to, to, to um, uh, move selected actors to the sub level or whatever, you can add selected actors to selected data layers. Uh, in this case, I will do that. And now we have all these actors sitting in that data layer. And then we will have all these actors sitting in the other data layer. And now it's always good to press save at some stage. Um, and uh, yeah, here you see uh, what I what I was talking about. Uh, due to that, every our every of our actors has uh, is uh, working as a one file per actor right now, and we are changing the property of in which data layer it lives. Um, every every actor has to be saved, and for the sake of completeness, let's just have a look at one actor, um, because in every actor now you have. Um, you have the ability to to um, set or, or to 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 uh, put it onto a data layer, and uh, as you see, you can have more or a multiple data layers where actors can live in. And I don't want to go into depth about that right now, but this is just like a hint or or something like that for what what you can dig into. It is possible to, to really set up complex structures with actors sitting in several data layers or data layers living in different worlds. But uh, you have to imagine our actors are somehow referenced in this data layer. So if you put this data layer to a different world, um, you can uh, uh, have these actors in that world as an actor set or something like that as well. So, um, or you could, what you can do is you can assign actors to data layers like that as well. So if you want to have an actor sitting on a data layer, there are many options. One is to just do it like that. The other one is to, as I did it, um, select everything and then just go to the data layers browser. If you, I, I think everybody found the data layers browser, um, uh, but uh, I didn't mention it, but um, in general, uh, you, you find the data layers browser in the world partition menu under, uh, uh, and here it's the data layers outliner, sorry. Um, yeah, in, in this here, it's called outliner. In, in other documentations, it's called browser. So basically, um, what can we do now? Um, we can, we should be able to, to um, 
switch between our red scene and our blue scene in the editor. So far, so good. Questions? There were one question related to the metric city, city sample. So from Henning, yeah. uh, how does it work to get, to get such a wide view over the city? How are the buildings in the far distance loaded? Um, I placed a metric city breakdown video from uh, Epic Games, a 40, 40 minute video. So probably there will your question be answered, but I don't know if you yeah. are able to answer the question or if you want to. That's, but... that's yeah, yeah, it, it just, just that's what I said about H lots. Um, yeah, this okay. is just like, uh, this is an, an H lot is a hierarchical lot. Um, and a hierarchical lot is always used if you have meshes where the view distance is so big that you can't really see the geometry or the detail geo or the details in geometry. So if you are you or if you are familiar with a level of detail system in general where you really have a high resolution or high poly um, mesh, which you see if you are really close to it, the far the more far you you move away, you move to some more simplified geometry. So, so if you have a LOD8 or whatever, um, you have just a geometry which uh, just, uh, imagine you have a sphere, like uh, these blue spheres um, uh, in the level here. And uh, if you move really close to that sphere, um, as, I, as I can do here, um, you can see that it at some point gets, or you see the segments um, because of, uh, this sphere is made out of whatever segments and maybe there's no smoothing groups or whatever. Um, I, I, I didn't really care about how I set that up when I set it up. But um, if you move away from that sphere and, uh, and you really, really, um, you, can, you can really have a look. Um, uh, uh, if you really move far away, especially maybe like uh, that far or whatever, or, or you just move out and out and out and out, all the spheres in the distance can be boxes or, or cubes because you will not really recognize that it's a sphere or a cube. So this is happening when you're talking about an LOD system and a hierarchical LOD system is um, just have a look at these spheres here, uh, which are really, really far away. And even if I move out a little bit more, then all these spheres just are basically consisting of like, four by four pixels or whatever on screen. So at that point, or a little bit earlier, it doesn't make sense to render the complete geometry and the, to render the complete aesthetic mesh. Um, and even with a reduced geometry, you would still have, for instance, four vertices. But you can replace these four vertices with, or, or eight vertices if you have a, a, a cube, sorry. And, but you can replace these eight vertices with a plane with some kind of a photo of that building. And that is what hierarchical lots do. They do some kind of a photograph of uh, the geometry. And then you can, um, uh, and then you have at the horizon, you, you simply have somehow 2D graphics, which look like 3D, but you will never dig into that because it's so far away. Did you, did you, did you, was that clear or, or was that understandable? It's so difficult to talk about these things without um, uh, having some things to really show. <laughs> but, not, uh, not for me, but I'm only the moderator here, so. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, for you, we would have to start. So, so far, no questions <laughs> right now. So you can go on. That's good. Okay, basically, yeah. So if we now press play, um, or, or what we are, we are talking about here is like um, uh, we were talking about how to switch in between the states in the editor. But what about if we press play, everything's black. Um, that's because, and you see it here in the, in the, in the outliner, nothing is loaded because um, we currently set our two data layers to be unloaded as the initial state. So what, what, what we could do is we could put them to a loaded state. And uh, if we now press play, 
And if we save, Okay, it's not working, but um, let's, ah, it is working, but uh, uh, I always make this uh, mistake. <laughs> um, you can, uh, there are, there used to be four states. Um, they used to be activated, dis deactivated, loaded, and unloaded. Um, and uh, they, they removed one and uh, it was like, or it is like, you can load stuff, but it doesn't necessarily have to be activated. Um, therefore, this is useful, for example, if you want um, many uh, actors sitting on different data layers popping in at once, then you can load them all one after the other, wait till they are all, all loaded, and then activate everything at once. So therefore, we have to switch that to activate it. And uh, as soon as we switch it to activate it, um, we have, yeah, we have the one or you see it here, the one we switch to activated is activated and the other one is only loaded. And so um, basically now, if, if I switch them to activated as well, um, then uh, we have both and both are activated and loaded. And this is obviously possible to do with, uh, with the blueprint logic. And so therefore I would like to switch everything to unloaded. And uh, then we just create a simple blueprint actor. And I would just name it like uh, main control. And then we can throw that blueprint actor in our world. And then we will have this actor doing the data layer loading. Therefore, what I would like to do for now, just for you uh, or, or that you can follow along, um, feel free to, to set up some buttons or whatever you want to or key presses or, or stuff like that. I'll just do a custom event. And that the one I will tell name like scene one. Then I will just do a second one, scene two. Oops. And uh, when you, I don't know if everybody knows that, but if you set the the um, the bool call an editor, um, then you this custom event, as long as you don't have any input properties, um, gets exposed to to the to the details panel. So as soon as you um, go to your details, you have your two events here. And you can trigger them even if you are in game mode. And so that's, for my opinion, the easiest way to just uh, simply um, try to trigger events just for testing purposes or whatever. Okay, so what do we want to do? First of all, we want to initially load our scene one, um, or we just. Um, we, we we don't need it. Um, so so basically, we can have a look um, that we that we somehow um, get a reference to the data layer subsystem. Um, we need the data layer subsystem to, to uh, tell the data layer subsystem what it has to do. And basically, if you just pull off from here and then have a look under data layers, um, well, then uh, you, it is possible to get some information of the currently loaded data layers or whatever, or to set the data layer runtime state. And uh, what we will use is, 
um, uh, that uh, the the we'll set the data layer instance runtime state because that is the instance in our level. And uh, first of all, I would uh, put in here, I will put a scene one and then we put activated and, uh, and then uh, we will put scene two. And then we'll put red scene two activated. And so what do we have to do additionally? We have to deactivate the other one. And so therefore, uh, I would just copy paste that, put it here and copy paste that one and put it here. And then we need And then we put unloaded. You could do it in a different way around. So first unload and then load or whatever, but this is just depends on your needs. And uh, if we then just compile, um, eventually we are able to load scene one or to switch to scene two. So far, so clear. Just people joking around, but yes, everything seems if, to if, if everybody's joking around, then everything's fine. It would be it would be really not that good if no one's joking around. Okay, so um yeah, if, if everybody was able to set that up and uh, to follow or, or to really get the idea of, um, uh, of uh, data layers, then I am really happy. And so let's quickly look about um, uh, some, uh, some things I just quickly want to mention. Um, this is uh, basically, you find uh, these... Um, uh, uh, things in the documentation as well, or if you just enter um, uh, WP in the in the uh, in the ah in the output log um, or in the in the console oh, prompt, yeah. Um, then uh, then you you will see uh, what you have for debug options, and these debug options really get um, uh, get uh, handy if you have especially bigger levels. So uh, I can really, really um, uh, just uh, just um, yeah, just try it out, figure it out, play around with it. Uh, especially if you if you have uh, like the matrix uh, city sample or or um, other uh, bigger bigger events then it's it's really all about um uh it is really difficult to see what is really currently streamed in what is streamed out which what is consisting to or what is uh, yeah what is happening and uh, these are really really good possibilities to to really um uh, debug um work partition actors streamed in streamed out or you can force um uh, everything to be at h lot no, at h lot zero um uh, which basically means um that you have the highest resolution of of the um uh, of your h lots um so so yeah play around with that um yeah once again any questions anything you want to talk about anything which is not clear um Shall we? Shall I show you something more? Shall we set up <laughs> a widget? Um, no, but it's, that's not what it's about today. But yeah, just let me know. So there are. I don't know if you see the chat, Stefan. Can you open the chat? Yes. Yeah, just, just give me a second. Mm -hmm. How do I open the chat if I don't have my? Uh, so at the at the at the top of the screen because you're sharing your screen, all the elements are have moved to the top of your screen. 
probably. Ah, no, it's, uh, it's, they moved to my third screen, sorry. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, it's the first time I'm doing a Zoom call. No, it's not, but... Uh... And uh, there is a question from Charles. Um, so he asked, it is not possible... Uh, no, sorry, no, it, it is not proposing any data layer in in data layer pin uh, any idea so charles you have more more of a problem instead of a directly question what do you mean by so in in, in data layer pin. you can you can unmute yourself charles if you want yes sure. and, do you hear me yeah, yeah loud and clear ah, good 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 uh, yes i was trying to follow um, along the the example you yeah. you, you did and there is a, a node a set data layer runtime states um and um i don't know it was it seems like uh, yours was automatically uh, filled uh, and it was uh, in data layer uh, bin i think mm -hmm. do you and, and and what where do you mean in 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 the in the browser here or in the blueprint in the blueprint ah okay you mean ah i, I think ah you mean this pin yeah 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 that that you can you can if if this, you you don't necessarily need to connect that pin you can just uh click here and then you have the drop down menu and then you can just switch to the data layer so what i have in here is here i switch the first data layer, as you can see here, it is uh, to scene zero. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, so um, did you do something to, to have a possibility to choose from a list? No, you, you, no, you, you, have, you, you always have the possibility. If, uh, as, as soon as you have data layers in your asset browser, you, ca you can click here and then you can see them. No, not in my side. No. Did, okay. Do you do you have the correct note? Set data layer instance runtime state. Set data layer runs runtime. Set da data well, layer instance is runtime the, it's state. Okay. Wow, it's it's really similar. Okay, okay. My, my <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. That's why we're, that's what we're here for. Yeah, I, I don't like uh, asking these sort of questions. No, questions. It's, it's it's complete uh, uh, common, and and it's uh, don't be afraid or whatever uh, because um, and and don't think that I'm. I have the same problems when I start working with new okay. things. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. You're welcome. Anyway. <laughs> so, Pavel, you can unmute yourself and ask this question directly. And just to be clear, Stefan, um, you yeah. can stop the presentation because we will not set the Q&A online. Okay. And if you are done with your project, or will there be more to come? Oh. In general, I have some kind of a conclusion and, and whatever, but, uh, so but let's uh, let's let's move over to the conclusion first before you stop the recording. Then I can cut these together, your conclusion, and then we go into the let's say the personal Q and A part because there are already some people who come up, Pavel and Sonia, yeah, uh, and we will answer this question shortly. I, 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 I really uh, quickly, or, or I just have uh, some kind of a quick uh, conclusion. Um, just like, um, just want to sum up what what did we learn? We learned uh, that we can, uh, um, yeah, that we can organize um, one level or work partition levels uh, in a similar way than with a classical level structure. The second thing is um, you can really structureize the level for having view possibilities in. The editor. So, so if you basically have a complex scene, or you have you are doing um, uh, mechanics, uh, uh, whatever, uh, setting up a motor or, or something like that, then uh, it's always really, really useful to be able to quickly hide uh, some actors, to show some actors, and whatever. You can do all that stuff with data layers. And uh, the the second thing I really want to point out is it is really having a, a worth having a look. Um, at streaming sources um, and uh, especially at level instances and pack level blueprints because these are two additional possibilities to put actors in kind of groups and to reuse them or to, to apply stuff to all of them. 
Um, and uh, if you use these level instances and packed level blueprints in combination with data layers and all that in combination with streaming sources, you are really, really, um, uh, you have the ability to set up a real complex uh, system and a complex world. The other thing is um, uh, what, what I really want to point out, it, it, what is worth looking at is working with uh, streaming sources and data layers and stuff like that and sequencer. So because um, uh, of course you can enable a data layer in a sequence as well. And so if you have um, a more complex sequences or whatever, where you move from one part in the world to the other or, or something like that, um, it is really, really possible to set up a somehow clever or, or ideal streaming system. The other thing I don't wanna forget to mention is there is the documentation we can put, I think we can put a 4.0 here at this stage, uh, a 5.0. Um, yeah, the documentation is, uh, especially for world partition, is not that bad um, uh, because uh, they, it was newly set up when they launched uh, 5. Um, and so therefore it's really worth um, uh, reading some parts of it, especially if you want to dig in special things depending on your needs um uh yeah okay that's it